What's up, Hope TV family? It's your boy, Dr. J.C. Howard here, and you are now locked into Christ and culture. Listen, I have something powerful to share with you today. I want to share with you the first part of a sermon I shared on the first Sunday of this month, in the month of February. First of all, I want to say shout out and salute to all of my uh, African-American brothers and sisters. Happy Black History Month, everyone. This is a sermon I shared that specifically uh, aligned with our, uh, our theme, our preaching theme for the month, uh, which was Blackity Black. And I want to share this powerful sermon with you coming from the Song of Solomon, the first chapter, a sermon called, We Who Are Dark and Lovely. It is imperative that you can see a reflection of yourself in the biblical narrative, and that is what we are doing on today. Join your boy, and I'm grateful to connect with you afterwards. Peace. Wisdom. Song of Solomon, and I want you to meet me in the very first chapter of that book, and at verse number five. Uh, happy uh, Black History Month to everyone. Uh, who celebrates black people. Uh, Song of Solomon, as you're turning there, uh, I want to make your attention uh, known to the fact that this month, I'm starting this today, I'm starting a new sermon series. Uh, the new sermon series is titled Blackity Black. Blackity Black, Blackity Black. That's what we're preaching from all month long. We are focusing uh, on our culture, on our people this month. And we're going to be preaching from that theme. Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse number 5. This is the word of the Lord according to the New King James Version. Uh, and it reads on this wise, the Bible says, I am dark but lovely. O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has tanned me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. Can I read that one more time, child of God? We don't hear literature like this anymore. It says, I am dark but lovely. O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon, do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has tanned me. My mother's sons were angry with me. They made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard I have not kept. Lord, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name that we do pray, and the people of God together said amen and amen again. Song of Solomon, at verse number five, that first line, I love that. I am dark but lovely. I am dark but lovely. Family, for the time that is ours to share on this very first Sunday in the month of February, if the Spirit of the Lord shall guide, I want to preach from the subject, we who are dark and lovely we who are dark and lovely family i can vividly remember it as a child being forced to go with my mother and sister to the hair salon from time to time surely it would get on my nerves we had to sit around and listen to the sisters gossip listen to the latest uh, fashion and what's going on with the latest fashion you had to sit around and try to occupy your time while sisters were half sleep under hair blow dryers and wash bowls were filled with hair and conversations between stylists and uh between stylists and the one who was being styled i i thought it was very interesting uh, interesting space if you will I had never really seen anything like it until I accompanied my mother and my sister a few times. And it was uh, it was something happened uh, at, on one of those visits that struck me. It was incredible, actually, because I was talking with my mother and she was preparing to uh, pay her hairdresser so that we could leave for the afternoon. Because you do know that when you go to the hair salon with the sister, it can be an all day affair. You can roll up in there at 9 a.m. and don't roll up out of there until 4 p.m. And so, child of God, it was one of those long day kind of affairs for your boy. And now, and y'all know how I get down. I, I literally have ADHD and I, I couldn't keep still. I had to find things to do to occupy my time. But I found something interesting that piqued, that piqued my curiosity and I asked my mother about it one day. I saw that
that as she was preparing to leave the hair salon, she asked her hairstylist by the name of Tangi. Shout out to Tangi. Uh, she asked Sister Tangi. She, uh, she said, uh, uh, "She said, Tangi, uh, do you have any more of that dark and lovely?" Uh, I looked at my mama like, "What is she talking about?" And Tangi said, "Yeah, girl, let me go get it right now." She went to a small cl closet and she came out with a jar of what looked like hair grease. She gave it to my mother. My mother paid her for her services and we left. When we got into the car, I said, Mama, can I ask you a question? I said, well, what is that that you bought? She said, what are you talking about? I said, the stuff called dark and lovely. She said, oh, it's hair grease for my scalp. I have to grease my scalp every now and then. I said, well, Mama, why is it called dark and lovely? I've never heard of that before. And she said, well, uh, don't you see my hair? I said, yes. She said, isn't it dark? I said, yes, it is. She said, don't you think it's lovely? And I wasn't stupid enough to say no. I said, yes, ma'am, it sure is. She said, then that's why it's called what it's called. I wanted to push the envelope a little bit further. I said, mom, that's cool. I like the name Dark and Lovely, but why in the world did you have to buy it from the hair salon when they sell these kind of products at the local store, at your local Walmart or Target? We could have went to Walmart and bought the, this grease with the shampoo. And she said, baby boo, I got news for you. They don't sell this grease in regular stores. You see, that's before they had black uh, merchandise in large corporations. She said, they don't sell this kind of grease in any regular store. I have to buy it from the hair salon because this product right here is created by black people for black people. I really like that. I was impressed by that. I said, that's interesting. It's interesting that mama had to buy a product from her hairstylist but, but because she could not receive the product at an ordinary store. But furthermore, I thought it was interesting that the product was called Dark and Lovely and that it was made by black folk for black folk. That's something in extremely interesting, if you will, because I believe that the product was created to accentuate that which black people possess. It, it was created to accentuate all of the accoutrements that go, that go with black beauty. You must understand, child of God, that who you are, man, male or female, if you are black, you ought to be proud. And the reason why is because you were created in the image of God. And God didn't just make you any old kind of way. He didn't just design you any old kind of way, but God made us dark and lovely. God created us to be dark and lovely. God kissed us with the sun, has our melanin popping all over the place. We were created to be dark and to be lovely, to be able to survive the rays of the sun. You must understand, child of God, that we indeed are God's highest creation. I just said something and I hope you didn't miss it. You sitting right where you are, you are God's highest creation. God took pride when he fashioned you. God took pride when he formed you. In fact, you're still the clay on the wheel and God is the potter, which means that God is still shaping us and forming us. What I'm trying to get you to see is that you should never in any case dummy down or try to water down who you are for anybody else. You ought to stand up every day of your life and say, I like my brown skin, whether it's caramel complected, whether is a uh, dark chocolate complected whether it I don't care what kind of complexion it is it might even be white chocolate if you will but I'm trying to find somebody who said I'm proud of who I am I'm proud of my complexion I'm proud of my curly hair I'm proud of my juicy lips I'm proud of my strong stature can I preach to somebody who's on the stream right now who said God took his time when he created our people we were uniquely created and we were purposed to walk in the kingdom and in the anointing of God. If you believe it, you ought to do me a favor. Just lift your hand like this. Throw your head back and shout hallelujah.
I'm black and I'm proud, yes. I'm blackity black, but I tell you, this child of God, I am God's highest creation. It was the famous, it was the famous theologian, uh, it was the famous theologian James Cone, if you will. Uh, Dr. James Cone, the late James Cone, uh, famous theologian out of Union Theological Seminary, uh, who developed and wrote the book called uh, God is the God of the Oppressed. He also made the notion and coined the term that God is black. He wanted to shock all of the world because he suggested the reason why he went out on the limb to call God black was because it was important that black people saw their value in the biblical text. It was imperative that black people understand that your history doesn't start on the shores of West Africa where you were stripped from your mother continent and drugged to this stolen land. Your history doesn't start there, but your history actually starts in the Bible. You should be able to see yourself and find yourself in the biblical text. And when I stumbled across Solomon, the first chapter, I realized that God was talking specifically to us because in verse number five, Brother Leonard, he says, I am dark but lovely. I love that. And that is an indication, child of God, that the Lord had you on his, the Lord had you on his mind when he created you. You are God's highest creation but something also should be interjected here because it's imperative to remember child of God that even though we are oppressed by outside forces even though racism is real and oppression is real we have a tendency to fight our own people I'm preaching I know I am I, I, I've got to tell it the way God told me to tell it we have a tendency sometimes to fight our own people we have created a bifurcation in our community from light skin to dark skin. We want to qualify who's real and who's really black by how dark you are or how light you are. We want to qualify who really fits in by how light you are versus how dark you are. Well, I got a word for you, child of God, and here's the word for today. I don't care how dark you are, and I don't care how light you are. If you're black, white people going to see you as black, and it doesn't matter how light you are, and it doesn't matter how dark you are. It doesn't, listen, we shouldn't be wasting our time fighting each other when the world is fighting us. I feel like preaching, is it all right? Just give yourself a high five and say, self, I'm not going to fight my own people. I'm not going to tear my own people down. I'm not going to chastise my own people. Yeah, we might disagree, but we're all dark and lovely because we were created by the king. If you believe it, do me a favor. Lift your hands like this. Throw your head back and shout glory. glory yeah 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 see we shouldn't uh, uh, be relegated to fighting ourselves uh, particularly when we have so much to fight on the outside uh, we need to celebrate one another we need uh, to champion one another we need uh, to push one another and not tear each other down uh, because at the end of the day we all we got <laughs> let me you don't like it that way let me put it to you this way uh, the reason why we shouldn't create these divisions and bifurcations uh, based on skin color is because at the end of the day uh, a white a white man or a white woman uh, if you're light skin or dark skin uh, they still going to see you as blackity black uh, and they still are going to try to assert some kind of supremacy uh, when we know that God did not create that order I'm preaching and I know I am on the first Sunday uh, let me give it to you like this if you don't understand it uh, uh, Tiger Woods had a tendency uh, of trying to divorce himself from his Africanity uh, he liked to hang out with some of the clear brothers and sisters uh, y'all know what I'm talking about uh, but when he went through a trial and tribulation can I get a witness somebody? He found out real quick that he was black. Y'all don't like the Tiger Woods example? There was another brother by the name of O.J. Simpson. I wish I had a witness somebody. O.J. Simpson found out real quick that he was blackity black. I'm trying to get you to see something, child of God, that you should be proud of your Africanity. You should take pride in who God created you to be because you were distinctly and uniquely created.
the Bible declares in this love letter called Song of Solomon the Bible declares and he says and I quote verse 5 I am dark but lovely O daughters of Jerusalem I love that we can stop right there he says I am dark but I am lovely mm -hmm, yes the first thing that I have to show you here child of God uh, the first thing that I want you to really grasp on and understand as we uh, as we meditate on the thought of being dark and lovely I want you to understand this the most beautiful things are produced in dark spaces uh, 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 the most beautiful things uh, are, are produced in dark spaces. Uh, uh, the Bible says that the writer lets this individual know, I am dark, but I am lovely, uh, which is an indication that being dark in that context uh, was somehow looked at as ridiculed. It was rid You were ridiculed if you were dark skin in those times. Can you believe it that we're fighting this light skin versus dark skin thing in twenty in the twenty first century? Uh, and they were still they were fighting it back in biblical times. There was this rift and there was this bifurcation between dark skin folk and light skin folk. But I like what the writer says because the writer says, I might be dark, but let me tell you something. I am lovely. In fact, it's lovely to be dark. I feel like having some church. He says, I am dark, but lovely, meaning that I, I am able to overcome your stereotypes. I am able to debunk that which you try to label me with. I am created in the image and the likeness of God, no matter what my complexion looks like. Am I preaching to anybody who's catching what I'm saying? Okay, let me give it to you like this. He says, I am dark, but I am lovely, which is an indication that it was frowned upon to be dark during those times. And yet he has found empowerment because he follows it up by saying, I am lovely. When he's trying to get the, uh, the person to understand, is that there are some beautiful things that are produced in dark spaces. The diamonds that are on your ring right now, they didn't just show up by osmosis. They weren't found in a bush somewhere. Those diamonds don't grow from trees. But you have to do something called mining, my goodness, in order to get diamonds. What does that mean, Pastor? That means you have to go to some old stones, some old mountains, if you will, and you have to stick dynamite into the mountain. You have to blow up the mountain and create a mine, if you will. Then you have to start digging tirelessly, day and night, digging for the diamonds. But once you get to a certain point in the mountain, you'll begin to discover that there's some wealth laid up because diamonds are hiding in dark spaces. I feel like preaching. Is it all right? You don't like diamonds? Well, sure, you have a gold chain somewhere. Gold is produced in in dark spaces. You have to go deep diving for gold. You can't just find gold lying around anywhere. That's why it's the most precious of metals. You have to dig up some stuff. I feel like preaching. Is it all right? You have to find some shallow water, if you will, and you have to start digging up the shallow water. You have to dig up beneath the dirt, and they find pieces of gold beneath the earth's surface. There are some beautiful things that are found in dark spaces. You don't like the gold example? Well, let me use oil. Oil, they call oil is black money, baby. If you strike oil, you're going to be taken care, of, taken care of for the rest of your life. But oil isn't just readily available to Misha. You can't just find oil anywhere, but you have to dig for oil. They have to get seismic drills to dig underground in order to strike the oil. The oil is wealth, but it is fat in dark spaces. Here's my last, here's my last analogy. Y'all didn't like the oil, y'all didn't like the diamonds, and you didn't like the gold. So let me give you this. Beautiful things are produced in dark spaces. What do you mean, Howard? Well, I am someone who enjoys the art of photography, Brenda Cherry. I enjoy the art of photography. And can I tell you, child of God, I have a cousin. And my cousin is a professional photographer. He has some old gadgets. gadgets. I don't know what kind of cameras these are. But let me tell you something. He came to our house one day. Mama asked her nephew. She said, nephew, come over and take some family pictures. 
pictures. We want to update our family pictures. He came over and he took the pictures with this quirky looking camera. And then he said, he said, Auntie Lisa, I'll have these pictures ready for you in about two weeks. She said, oh, wait a minute, Drew, why two weeks? Can't you just email me the pictures in a couple of days? He said, uh-uh, Auntie, I'm not giving you digital photos. Ah, yes, I'm giving you something that's already fully developed. And they can't develop in a few days. I have to go home and I have to put the, I have to develop my film. Then I have to take the photos and dip them into a solution. And then I have to hang them on a clothesline. After I hang them on the clothesline, I've got to make sure that the lights are low. I've got to make sure it's dark in the room. Because in order, my gosh, in order for the negative to turn into a positive, it must develop in the dark. Can I preach to somebody here who feels like having some church? I'm starting to feel better now, Ken. Who feels like having some church? Who said, I'm so glad that there are some beautiful things that develop in dark spaces. And if you don't like the photos, if you don't like the oil, if you don't like the diamonds and the gold, then baby boo thing, do me one favor. Start looking at yourself. Look at where you are right now because I have a word for you. Baby boo thing, you you were developed in some dark spaces. Don't you remember the hell you went through? Don't you remember the valley season you had to go through? Don't you remember when people dragged your name through the mud? People talked about you, stabbed you in the back? Don't you remember when people walked out of your life? But that, you, what you didn't realize, that was a part of your development. You were developed in some dark spaces. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Some of the most beautiful things are produced in dark spaces. Uh, uh, we who are dark and lovely ought to take pride in who God created us to be. Uh, uh, we ought, we ought, we ought be proud to be who God has ushered us and manufactured us to be, uh, 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 because we are a people that was created and built with a purpose. Not only the most beautiful, not only are the most beautiful things found uh, in dark spaces, uh, but the sun didn't scorch, it gave significance. Uh, uh, the sun didn't scorch, it gave uh, significance. Uh, the Bible says, I am dark but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar, like the curtains of Solomon. Do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has tanned me. My mother's sons were angry with me, and they made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard... I have not kept. I've got to show you this thing in the text, child of God. Uh, the sun didn't scorch us. Uh, it gave us significance. Uh, the Bible declares uh, that he, he makes a declaration. Uh, the declaration is that I am dark, but I am lovely, baby. Uh, uh, like the daughters of Jerusalem. Uh, the daughters of Jerusalem are dark and lovely. And then he says something powerful. Uh, like the curtains of Solomon, like the tents of Kedar. They're trying to draw an analogy here. They're trying to get the people to see that there are some valuable things that are dark. The tents of Kedar. Kedar, understand that these individuals that are being referred to here were nomadic shepherds. Shepherds that out of Arabia. Shepherds out of Arabia. I'm, I hope you're catching this. Out of the Arabian Peninsula. These are shepherds out of Arabia, meaning that these are men of color. These are per people that look like you and I. The writer is trying to get us to see that there is value in being dark, that there is significance in being dark, that there is strength in being a person of color. But here's what I want to show you, because the writer says, do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has tanned me. In other words, don't judge me because I am dark, because I work in these heat-oriented conditions. I work in the sun, and the sun has tanned my skin. Our skin, child of God, is beautifully made by God. Our skin color is not a curse, but it is a sign of just how much God loves us. Everything is good with a little color. 
just says something. I said, everything, baby, is good with a little color in it. TV seems to be better with color. A coloring book is better with a little color. Can I get a witness here, somebody? Even your inkjet printer is better when it has some color ink. Everything is better with a little color. Our skin is dark because we are originally from spaces where the sun and heat are dominant. And he added melanin in our skin so that we be comfortable in those conditions. Aren't you grateful that God was mindful of you and grateful, grateful, and aren't you grateful that God was able to condition you and resource you with what you needed to survive? But here's what I love, child of God. The reason why you should love your skin color, the reason why you should love being a, a, of a darker hue is because everybody's trying to be like you. You already natural with it, baby. Your caramel complexion, your milk chocolate complexion, your dark chocolate complexion. You're already where other people trying to be. Isn't it funny that some white folk try to oppress and are racist against black folk and yet they go to the beach and they sit on in the sand for 10 hours a day with this big metal thing in front of them trying to get a tan. Why? Because they want to look like me. I feel like preaching today. Give yourself a high five and say self, tell them to get like me. You going to the tanning salon to get like me. You sitting out in the sun to get like me. I already have what you want. And here's the shout. Uh, the shout is, uh, that's a shouting point all by itself. The fact that there's a, how can you, how, yes, how can you not want me to go to the same, uh, same events as you? How is it that you are racist? How is it that you don't like black people and yet you try, you're doing everything to look like us? You have the parents, y'all going to get tans so you can look like us. But upstairs in the bedroom, your children are fixing their hair like our hair. They're listening to our music. They're dancing to our TikToks. Can I preach to somebody who said they trying to get like us? Uh, 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 here's the shout. The shout is that God added melanin to our skin so that we could be with, so that we could withstand uh, the conditions of heat and sun. Uh, but the real shout is this, because uh, you can see that as uh, uh, an analogy. You can see that as an analogy, if you will, because uh, it simply suggests uh, that no matter what kind of conditions you're in, Calabuspe, uh, no matter what you go through in your life, uh, God is going to equip you with e I feel Holy Ghost. God is is going to equip you with everything that you need to withstand that season. Are you wondering why you didn't lose your mind last year when you felt like throwing in the towel? It's because God equipped you with what you needed to withstand the season. You want to know why you didn't go ahead and just walk away from it all? It's because God equipped you with what you needed to withstand the season. I'm not talking to some people who want to shout when they're delivered. I want to talk to some people who feel delivered while they're already in it. I feel like preaching today. Did you hear what I just said? I said, I'm not waiting for people to shout once they get delivered. I want to find some people who say I'm delivered while they're in it because they know God. His deliverance is on its way and he will sustain you and keep you in the midst of what you're going through. If you believe it, just shout glory. I'm done today. Uh, 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 I'm finished. Uh, uh, the most beautiful things are produced in dark spaces. But secondly, the sun didn't scorch. It gave significance. Uh, 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 we stand out. Uh, uh, I'll never forget real quick if I can insert this commercial. I'll never forget that a friend of mine, that's about, that's, that's about my height. He went. Uh, to Asia. He ended up going uh, to China and then to Tokyo. Uh, he said, and the experience was incredible. He said when he got there, he was just sitting on some steps and people started walking up, sitting down and taking pictures next to him. Uh, he asked one of the tour guides, he said, why are all these strangers taking pictures with me? 
I'm not an athlete. I'm not an actor or I'm not a superstar. Uh, uh, and, and the tour guy said, uh, uh, the reason why they're taking pictures with you uh, is because uh, they don't rarely see black people on this side of the world. Uh, and they because they don't get to see black people, they only get to enjoy black culture. And so every time they see a black person, they associate it to what they see on TV. Are you trying? Are you catching what I'm saying? I'm trying to get you to see that our skin color gives us some significance not just in our community, but across the entire world. I'll leave you when I tell you this, though. The, the sun didn't scorch it, uh, the, uh, but gave significance. But finally, this is the moment to concentrate on our collective success. This is the moment, we who are dark and lovely, to concentrate on our collective Success. Uh, 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 the Bible says, I am dark, but I am lovely. Then in verse number six, he says, do not look upon me because I am dark, because the sun has kissed me.